Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventure 365 and an update video on Beryl. Now after the last trip we did in Beryl, which was a shakedown trip to see what would break, things broke and as you can see the bonnet's open and things happened. Before we went away on the shakedown trip, there was a squealing coming from the engine and oh, I know what it was, it was that bearing on the timing cover. So I put a new timing cover on before we left. I didn't film it, it was like, you know, you just unbolt the timing cover, put a new timing cover on and that's got a nice quiet belt in it. And I thought that was it. Now when we started the truck up, after putting the timing cover on, started it up, fired straight up as it normally does, and there was a, I want to say, a squeak, but it wasn't, it was more of a grunge, if you know what I mean. Well, when we got back, there was an oil leak, and it was coming from the front crankshaft oil seal. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I'd already replaced all of the seals, and I thought that was odd, but it was like dusty as well. It was like, there was oil and dust. So that's not good, that's a new timing belt, new timing gear, new, new everything in there. So I decided to take the timing cover off. There is some other issues, we'll get to those in a minute. But the, I took the timing cover off and the first thing I saw, hang on, let's see if you can see it, is that cut in the timing cover. That was the grunching noise. Now the noise we heard was, like I say, it was a grunching, squealing noise. So what happened was the, the tensioner roller had actually caught on the cover and locked up. And the squealing noise was the timing belt spinning over it. That's not good. So uh, I drove 600 miles. So we got, we got, you know, the other day I decided to pull it apart and see what was going on. And uh, by this time the noise had stopped because this had obviously machined uh, a path into the cover and wasn't making a noise. Now, when I first took that off I thought, how's that happened? It's like, the, the pulleys are flush. Let me just grab a pulley. Right, I've got the pulley set that I took out. Let me just drop that bolt in. Now, the pulley set is, is flush, as you can see, it's, and it's not bent, and that's how it should ride. So, oh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually where it was rubbing, and it actually heated the roller up. Is that going to focus? Yeah. Move that shot, and it might, there you go, it's focused for you. But you can see where that was heating up. So that was rubbing, but only in what, that's obviously where it locked up originally and it's got hot. And it was only hitting in one point because it didn't heat up, you know, the rest of the roller. But anyway, so the rollers are flat. I've put them on a gauge and the rollers are flat. And that one, if I focus again, hang on. There you go. That one is actually lower than that one. And that was the one that was binding. Yeah, confused me for a few minutes, until I took it all apart. Now, I'll have to get this to focus in. So there's the roller, and that roller bolts on and holds this carrier in, in place. Put that down. So I'll have to make this focus again, hang on. Focus on my hand. Right, is that going to focus? Let me move my face out of shot, it might fit. there you go. I don't know if you can see it, there you go, you can see the shiny bits. You see the two shiny spots up here? This had slipped behind the roller. So obviously it had loosened the... Well, I, I say slipped, I must have actually bolted it up like that. It must have slipped while I was bolting it up. So, this is really hard to film guys. The roller was sitting, it wants to focus on my face, hang on, focus on that, hang on. It was bolted up like that, if 
Yeah, so it was like that sitting. So the roller, you couldn't see it. You could not tell that it was not level. So, and it's all bolted up and went together. But the weird thing is, the weird thing is that it did not rub on the original timing cover. So I'm wondering if it did slip, if, if something, if it did, the bolt felt tight when I went to undo it. When I went to unbolt this one, the one that was offset, it was tight. So I don't know what happened. So it's knackered the cam belt. Let me just grab the belt and I'll show you. Right, here's the belt. If, I, if it'll focus on it for you, it might do, might not. It's a bit difficult getting to focus this close, hang on. There you go, it's focused. Can you see where it's cut into the belt? It's actually cut a groove in the belt as well. So belt scrap, 600 miles out, it's a, it's, a, it's a Deco belt. But you can actually see where it's slid. If it did stay focused on it, focus. So anyway, as it won't focus, but it's, it's spun round on the belt enough that it's rubbed the right enough. But you can see where it's spun on, spun on the belt. I'm just trying to find any of the writing, but it's rubbed off. It actually says it's Deco. But anyway. So anyway, uh, that's scrap. Timing cover's saveable. Um, so I'm actually waiting for a new set of timing gear to arrive. But the bloody post's on strike. I should have just driven over to the Land Rover dealer and got some. Uh, just got a got a cam belt set, but I didn't know the post was going to be on strike again, so that's how holding me up. So a quick squeeze in the engine, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I've got all the timing gear out. I've put in a new uh, lower crankshaft oil seal anyway, because I've got one on the shelf. Uh, I'm just going to chuck another camshaft seal in. It actually doesn't look, that one looks like it's been replaced and it looks like all the oil around it is old oil. So I think someone actually must have replaced that in the past. But, well, it's off. I'll just chuck a new one on. Uh, I've got the pump locked off. I've got the crank locked off. So that's all fairly straightforward. Got it all cleaned down in there. But there's all metal shavings and everything. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them on camera, the sparkly bits. You might be able to. But there is all sorts of metal shavings in there where it was machining itself into the uh, housing. So that's the first problem we uncovered. Well, it actually wasn't the first one. I'll show you the second one. Now, actually, you can't actually see the second one because I've covered it up. But when we came back... Uh, no, I don't think I can get the camera in either. Um, I had a leaking core plug. So I had to replace one of the core plugs, so I had to take the inlet manifold off and the turbo and everything. I had to do the back core plug, it was leaking. Uh, probably because the engine had been stood for a while with no antifreeze in it. Or the previous owners had driven it with no antifreeze. Look, I'm back! Right, so um, yeah, I ended up having to replace a couple of the core plugs. The, um, the back one had rusted through. Luckily, it went... Well, it was sitting in the workshop. It was fine while we were driving and we went away in Heimdall to do one of the trips. And when I come back, there was water all over the workshop floor. So I'd set the turbo off the inlet manifold, knock out the core plug, knock a core plug in. Uh, and I did the one next to it as well. And the one next to it was fine. There was no rust on it at all. So just funny, one of the core plugs had rusted through. So yeah, I had to put a couple of core plugs in and... Uh, that was yet another problem. But there is more. I will get to it. There is more. But uh, just while I'm on the subject of core plugs and coolant, don't run your engine without coolant. It will kill it, especially if you've got a cast iron block. So hang on. Make sure you've got coolant. So that's what's going back in that. Also, I'm going to put in... The, oh, will it focus? Come on, camera, you can do it. There you go. The 4B UV dye. This is for leaks, uh, to detect leaks. This is 
I run this in all my trucks and I hadn't put it in this one because I hadn't actually flushed the cooling system so this kit's going in there so you put one sachet of the dye there's an ultraviolet light in there and you can actually shine it around the engine to see where the leaks are would have saved me a lot of hunting for the leak on the core plug because I couldn't work out where it was coming from I was I started off thinking is it the head leaking <laughs> brand new head brand new gasket you know shouldn't be leaking um, and I wish I'd put it in so when I put the coolant back in the 4B UV dye is going in love that stuff it's great I run it in Heimdall I run it in Karen's Golf I run it in everything I even run it in my van it's like just to be able to shine that UV light round and see where any coolant leaks are coming from and I know where the leaks are coming from on Karen's car it's the bottom hose on the radiator but uh, just because of that so uh, yeah next problem when we came back uh, we had an oil leak off the new transfer case now it was dripping out of the, the, the weep hole at the back here on the transfer case oh also my handbrake was playing up but that was just a bit of adjustment that was just bedding it in but the rear seal was leaking on the transfer case now again don't know why I've put a new seal in and uh, the one I took out was fine there was nothing wrong with it the the flange is new so I don't know why it was leaking but I've put a new seal in it anyway, so uh, that was just a you know half hour job just to rip the handbrake off and put that in. But don't know why that was leaking. But the light's not so good up here. Let me drag some lights up here. There we go. Yeah, I might be able to see that a bit better. Um, the front one was leaking too. It's leaking here. You can actually see where it's wet. That I don't mind so much because this front UJ is on its way out. Um, let me just grab the prop shaft and see if you can see it. But uh, you can't really see it on camera, but there's excessive play in that front UJ. So I'm just going to put a new, I think I'm just going to put a double decard and prop shaft on the front. Because the, the angle isn't bad and it's not knuckling out, but I quite like running the double decard and prop shafts. So that's a video for later swapping that out. It'll run for now because I'm not going very far, but I'll probably do that next week before we go on a trip in the truck. So that's the underneath, and I've got one last thing to show you. Yes, it's the rear anti-roll bar. Uh, I've sorted it. Well, I think I've sorted it because we haven't been able to take the truck on the test drive because of the engine being broken. So hopefully my parts will arrive today and uh, I can actually take it for a test run but uh, if you have a look at the knuckle joints they actually clear the springs now now um, a couple of people have suggested that I should have put them on the inside but you can't it would be great if you could but I don't know if you can see the shape of it you can't get it in there and this has got a seat in it as well for the you know it's shaped for the um, whatever that's called it eludes me what that's called at the moment ball joint there you go ball joint so it's already you'd have to cut it out and flip it over which actually wouldn't be a bad thing to do oh except it's probably at the exhaust I'm just looking at it at the exhaust as well so cunning plan I've moved these I cut them off, moved them back 15 mil. So let me get a different angle. So I've just come over to the other side because I can get into film easier because the exhaust's not in the way. Um, yeah, these were originally here, so I've stepped them all back 15 mil, and that's given me the clearance. Uh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, you should be able to see that. The, there's clearance on that. I've jacked the truck up. I've articulated it and it seems not to uh, hit the spring so I'm going to run with that and see if it works and if it doesn't I'll come up with a different plan where well, I can't really tell till I've fixed the engine and I actually take it out but I really do want to test drive this with this uh, X-Engineering anti-roll bar on but yeah so 
they were originally, like I was saying, there. And it was no big effort for I just unbolted this, dropped it down, chopped them off, moved it back. It isn't a big job to do, so uh, a bit of fabricating and welding, it's just a normal day here. So there, that's uh, the update video, guys. So yeah, there you go, quick update video for you. Um, I probably will film putting the cam belt in, just you know, for future reference that uh, just give you an idea of how to do it. It's really awkward to film to get the camera in to actually show it. So I'll, I'll do a bit on that and uh, like I say, definitely on the front uh, double decard and prop shaft putting that in. But uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, one update video. So if you've enjoyed it guys, give me that thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you click on that notification bell and I will see you on the next one.